Number one on the Sagittas jab form is simply a horizontal jab, a vertical cut, an uppercut, and a corkscrew thrust. That gets expressed against the opponent one of several ways via a stick. A bait towards his eyes with that jab, come around in a scissoring motion. I can continue the jab there, vertical cut or hit, uppercut, and then a corkscrew thrust. Uh, if I have access to the eyes, that course through thrust is fine. If not, I can also simply jab. If he strikes in the process of that, I can wind around and jab with my stick to the corner of the eye. Um, however, with a sword, I think you have a lot more bang for your buck with that thrust, a lot more opportunities for where you can place that thrust. And we'll go into that in a moment. All right, there's a difference on the basic jab also in the weight of the weapon. If I have a lightweight rattan stick, I can just jab the thing out there and simply pull it back with wrist strength. You don't want to try that with a heavy sword and hope to get any speed out of it. So what you can use is a gross motion, say drawing the sword out of the sheath. Use that gross motion as simply raising the sword. That is in itself, think of it as a fake. Uh, drawing the sword out of the sheath, when he goes for that, I can counter cut there. So that motion can be an effective uh, translation of that basic jab with the stick. So you have, to, you have to make adjustments not only for the type of weapon you're using, but the weight of the weapon. You know, the stick may weigh one pound, the sword might be two and a half pounds. You know, something more than twice the weight of your training stick, you're not going to flick it around, you know, in the air like it's a, uh, a little thin piece of rattan. So you have to make allowances for that. So you can draw this up, raising this in the air as a draw motion. We'll say there's a scabbard. Raising this in the air does not put pressure on your wrist. It's a deltoid move. And then right from there, there's your cut. And that's a very effective translation, let's say, between the basic jab with stick and the application on sword. The next step in my teaching progression, when I teach the Gita, we're giving the basic jab with diamond footwork. So, if we're fighting forehand, backhand, trying to get a shot in, I'll enter in with reverse triangle here. I hit the eyes, nice, I'll just charge in. But if I don't, if it out of that and counter cuts me, I get offline on reverse, on forward triangle, retreating back, so I'm not inside uh, his strength of his arc, of his power cut. Then, when he counter cuts me, I'll step again back in a longer line, so I can let his stick pass me, and then I have access to the center line, and there's my counter thrust. If in the process of counter thrust he comes in, I might come in under that part, and there's my thrust on reverse triangle. That would complete the diamond. So there's a lot of variations on footwork in there, but I want you to see how you're tying the footwork together, and that's my next stage of progression on stick techniques. Next phase of teaching is with diamond footwork. So, let's say we're fighting on one and two. I'll scissor open coming into the first part of the diamond, the first part of the reverse triangle, the entry. If I get the eyes, fine, I'll, that vertical is to his head. But if he waves out of that, now his weapon is coming towards me, I'll take the next step of the forward triangle, which is actually the retreating step, get outside his arc and hit his stick. If we're an equal weight of weapons, then I can stop his motion and go back into my jab and take the eyes and go back into those first two attacks. However, if his weapon is heavier than mine, I'll let that go by and there's my jab to the eyes. And then I continue the motion from there. This uppercut motion, you'll see if I have a stick, I like to slide off his arm in the uppercut and that gives me the access to the eyes. If I had a sword, I might thrust low into there uh, into the belly, hips, heart, because I have enough damage done with the sword, I'm not going to really do that with a stick. So I have to make modifications between sword and stick. I'm going to show you some of those in a moment. Now, when we're working with swords, things are a little different. Uh, I've taken this Rollings practice plastic sword and mocked it up with uh, putting a piece of plastic here so it acts as a contortionist sword. The long sword was designed so the bottom half was dull. Normally, with a sword, you would not want to go cutting edge to cutting edge. You can chip out an edge, potentially break your sword. However, if you have 
this whole bottom part of the flat bar of steel, you're probably not going to break your sword. And then I could skip in with that as my horizontal, if I get ahead, as my vertical or another horizontal on the neck. However, let's say this is uh, not a good church of sword. Uh, it's just straight edge from top to bottom. So my first cut is actually going for the hand. I'm going to do this at range. And then come in and then try my horizontal cut from there. Or go for the hand. Now, of course, he's going to react to that by drawing in. So I don't get the hand. So my backhand cut now is I step on reverse triangle, angling off to my right, letting my tip come out to the eyes. If I get that fine, come back with a horizontal to the neck. If he waves out of that and turns, whoop, his blade is coming in. So I'll take that with hopefully the duller portion here, break out, and there's my back cut here. If I get that, fine. If not, or if I don't take off the head, I just get the carotid. I have to drop down to his arm and pick up. If he starts coming back at me, then my upper cut is simply a block. However, I could also get into here, and if I thrust and that starts coming in, I'll open this up and duck under my blade. And hopefully my guard will protect me on top, and my uh, blade will be in there impacting the body. I'm not thrusting horizontally in the abs, because you go through the back all the way through, and he's not going to fall down right now, and now i got a really angry man with a blade here. So you notice I'm actually angling down, very much like the spear technique, trying to get into the pelvis to push him back or push me away from him uh, before he has time to counter cut me with his sword. Hopefully he'll bleed out. You know, somewhere over there I get time to leave. Um, and that's one variation when you're dealing with a sword, which looks different than a stick. You have to apply different techniques for different weapons. You notice sometimes that the left hand is guarding the head on that vertical drop. What that's for is act as a guard against the shield technique, uh, against the stick. So, say we're fighting on forehand, backhand. If I go up to his eyes and lean back against that, and the thing, part of his body closest to me is his foot, I might end up going for that foot. But, I'm going to watch my head. So my hand will be up near my head, not touching, but near my head. So if I do get hit, it'll transfer into my hand and not uh, get hit into the head. And then I'll uppercut and come up and jab. Uh, when you do it with a sword, things get interesting. Now this is a live blade, so we're going to be real careful with this. But, um... A lot of the short swords in the Philippines, the scabbard is meant to come out on the draw and actually hold this. So, I'm going to say I have the short sword in my hand. When he goes and I go for that low cut and he comes in, I'll keep my hand here till the last motion. And if we'll angle this way, maybe the camera can see a little better. My hand and my scabbard is actually on my head. He goes to hit me right in my hand. And if I extend that at the last minute, it's like circular motion. I get to block that, and then I, I'm up into the eyes. So you're actually using the uh, scabbard as a guard when you see this on, on some of the short swords. You'll draw the whole thing out together, draw, and then you're fighting in here. And if I do a motion that my sword is low, my scabbard is high to act as a guard. And then the rest of the thrust is accomplished. And it's one variation of why you have the left hand up high by the head.